Hi there, YouTube. The other day, a friend of mine asked me to make him up a get out dodge survival kit for when he's out backpacking and stuff. So here's what I came up with. We've got some old leather swatches from the old couch because you can use that turn it into cordage, shoes, gloves, whatever if you needed to in an emergency. I might add. We've got a couple of big. I think they're about 60 litre, 55 litre bin bags. Because, again, you never know. They could work. They can, well, they do work. Use them for carrying water, making shelter, use them for bedding, all that sort of stuff. In here, I've got my little stainless steel flower shaker. So you can use the top to strain water through. You can boil water in it. Put in there, you'll hear that rat on. Is a miniature fishing kit. I've got all my extra line, shots, weights, all that sort of stuff in there. And in here, I've got more shots, weights, lines, well, hooks, lures, all that sort of stuff. But in the other can, I've also got a miniature hand line if I needed to. Here, I've got my little backpack fishing rod. Originally it was one of them pen fishing rods in the metal handle instead of this one. I had an old rod that broke so I customised it. It's now more durable, more comfortable and you can accept lots of different size reels. This is just a little miniature backpack and reel. You can see in size comparison to my middle finger there that it's about the same sort of size. And again, you can take that off, but I've just still got my little miniature lure attached to it. So that's the fishing aspect. Also got cordage, lots of different stuff. There's my dog. Got 30 meter thin line. I think that was about four quid from home base. A thicker line, four quid from home base. So that's the 30 meter reel. The other one came in, I think it was a hundred meter reel. So. Good difference, but good price. Going to the combustion side, got my tinder, which is a lot of cotton, shredded and stuffed into an old mince tube. Wasn't waterproof, so I waterproofed it with electrical tape. Just got a few more wraps over the top, done. <coughs> also got the fire steel, but I've got this one so that it hangs around my neck at all times. So, you know, never going to lose it. Got half a multi tool. I had one that broke. This is the side that's got the knife, can opener, all that sort of stuff, the saw and everything in there. Again, just a little bit more fishing line. This is an old magnet, one of the magnetic pickup things that you use in a garage if you drop screws or whatever. The shaft broke on it, so I turned it into a little takeaway, takeaway torch. So it's got magnetic, so I can pick stuff up small if I drop it, and also the torch element. There, I've got my little backup torch, just a wee single LED again. I've got my main cutting tool, if I can find where I've put the damn thing now. I've got my big fixed blade, which I cannot find anywhere, so I'll put it down and I can't fucking find it. My Bergen silver, knev or whatever it is, Swedish blade. And this one, a friend, my friend's dad's an antique collector, and he knows I go camping and all that. He found this in the bottom of a box of books from the Chief Scout of South Africa in 1950. It's an English-made blade. It is a good, solid blade. I also carry in there a double-edged razor, because. Fantastic for skin and game and all that if you need to. We've also got a kitchen knife in there for preparing game. In here I had a couple of one was a mora and one was actually from a throwing knife I had. But the handles on them broke after so much abuse. So I figured I'll chuck them into the pack because you can use that for spear fishing if necessary if you lost all your other gear. So it's just a bit easier to tie on than still having the handle or attempting to even fix the handle. 
But I like to ha have multiple cutting tools. Because if one fails, you've got a backup. So my main one I've got a if I can find it now. Ah, there it is. So that's my main blade that I always carry on me out in the woods. Good solid, full tang, nice pommel. The only thing is it doesn't have a finger guard, so I could slip and I could skin my well, cut myself bad. My backup knife I always carry on me. My Bear Grylls Ultimate Survival Scout Knife. I've abused this thing this past week. Never even sharpened it. And it's still fucking razor sharp. Right, so that's that kit done. When I was at work yesterday, I decided to nip into Sports Direct next door. See what they had in the camping section. And this was what caught my eye. It's a little first aid kit. So this takes care of the first aid portion of the kit. But in here, once you open it up, this is another audition I put in ibuprofen tablets. It has an absolute ton of fantastic but it's just generally good for out camping or just carrying about in the car or whatever. So I figured this thing would make a lot better of a miniature survival kit. So in there, I've made some additions to it. This is the stuff that came with it. Ten assorted waterproof plasters. Insect repellent wipe. Wound sterilising wipes. Blister plaster, because if you're hiking about, always good. See if you can see through there. Emergency splice, splice, space blanket. Which again, you could use for an emergency shelter if you really needed to. And the other thing that came with it, get that out of there just now, was, uh, come here, you son of a gun, that sterile first aid dressing. So again, fantastic to have. My additions to this kit, as well as having the paracetamol there, ibuprofen, was the Bear Grylls Ultimate Survival, Priorities of Survival, I should say, Pocket Guide. Because that's a good thing to have. If I've lost my main and my backup knife, with my little Swiss Army, some cordage, water purification tablets, because this being a small day kit, I couldn't fit a steel container or anything in there. Again, a backup upon a backup, a little miniature lock knife. That one actually was my dad's, but he gave it to me when I was a kid. I've got I also when I was at Sports Direct, I picked up another fire steel. So this one's still got the striker and everything on it. Where usually I would just use my knife. And as you can see, still black, still never been even scratched. And cotton. I will eventually put petroleum jelly or whatever onto that to stop it being well, make it burn longer for one and make it water resistant for another. And I'll pack it into another one of those mince tubes. So that's just a couple of little survival kits there. A good thing as well, to always carry with you in your kits, even if you're not a smoker, is tobacco. If you're getting bitten alive by midges, or if you're American, mosquitoes, you can rub tobacco over your skin and it stops the insects biting onto you. Also good if you're in an area with leeches. You put that on your skin first and the leech will not bite through the tobacco. They hate that. So again, if you put that in a little waterproof bag, whatever, you'd be alright. My next additions into this kit is, this is my hand line. It's a big hand line. I'm going to cut that down and make a miniature version. So it's like that size. So you can just hold a little bit of line on there. Hooks. I can put a stopper in the end, put shot and everything. And this this is actually from my other kit I was showing you. Forgot about that there. In the end, I've got a clipper lighter jammed into it in a plastic bag. So if I, I've got an emergency combustion, guaranteed if I need it as well. Alright, thanks for watching YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment, like and rate. Thank you. Bye.